The internet has made getting health and wellness information more accessible than ever, but making sure that we are getting reliable and accurate information is also more important than ever. Caitlin Jettelina is your local epidemiologist and is here with more information on how we can make sure we are dispelling all the myths and rumors. Thanks for your time today. Thanks for having me. All right, this is such an important topic yes. because we are in a time of rampant misinformation when it comes to public health. First off, let's set the scene. How did we get here? Yeah, we found ourselves in this perfect storm right now. Um, the information landscape has dramatically shifted. People get their health information on social media, and social media um, is driven by emotions due to the logarithm. So what we see is false news spread six times faster than the truth. Mm -hmm. um, second, there are bad actors that take advantage of this system that are getting paid boatloads of money, all the way from you know ads to selling clicks and really taking advantage of this. Third, you know, we've really seen this wave or this dramatic wave of the curiosity driven class that people have questions, they have a lot of concern and a lot of confusion and can't find their answers um, from us in public health. And so this creates this, this huge information void mm -hmm which then is filled with mis and disinformation on social media. But you've been really successful at utilizing social media to put accurate and reliable information out there. Do you find that that's hard to do when the general population is told, don't get your health information from social media. They're told that, but that doesn't mean that it's that they don't. Them. Okay. <laughs> I mean, one in two Americans get their health information on social media. Okay. And so where I really think that public health needs to step up is to meet people where they are, mm -hmm. and that is social media. And that doesn't mean we can create, you know, a very uh, st strict, boring, sterilized post. I mean, humans trust other humans and they mm -hmm. want to see other faces. They want to see who's behind public health and what we have to say as well. And we can answer their questions and confusions from a place of empathy. And so that's where I really tried to lean in, that to meet with people where they're at, to listen to what their questions and concerns mm -hmm. are, and to show a human face behind public health as well. So you've been very successful at you know, cultivating this online following. What have you noticed about what people are seeking when they turn to social media or getting their information online? What are they looking for? There are, you know, I don't think people need more data and more facts. They need storytellers, they need navigators, and they need narrators. And so what that tells me is that, yeah, we can, I give facts all the time, I'm still this nerd, but also people want nuance. They really want to understand, does Tylenol cause autism? And why is there a kernel of truth there is there and what is the nuance around here and what are the studies we are relying on and so what i have learned is never underestimate the public mm -hmm. they really want to know what's going on they know want to know the why um, but we need to translate that mm -hmm. into understandable terms and um, in a very timely manner so you're really having to boil down what can be sometimes complex, you know, medical information into layman's terms. That's right. I mean, it's an art form, right? You're balancing nuance and understandability, and that's a tug of war. That's something we're never taught as scientists, but certainly something we need to cultivate incredibly quickly. We're about 20 years behind on this, and bring the public along for the ride and explain the uncertainty, explain the scientific discovery, and explain the hope and excitement that is behind our science and our research as well. I want to talk to you a little bit about algorithms because as somebody who has social media, I know that based on what I'm looking at, what I'm liking, what I'm clicking, what I'm sharing with my friends, the algorithm starts generating that type of content to put on my, my explore page. How do you combat that so that people don't find themselves in this echo chamber of the information that they think that they want to hear versus what's accurate information? Yeah, I mean, this is like the billion dollar question, right? <laughs> and I think that um, we can change the logarithms and we, mm -hmm. we need that on a policy level. Okay. But in the meantime, uh, where I have done is um, odd bedfellow partnerships. And so I've partnered with mom influencers, for example, faith-based influencers that do usually have a very different echo chamber or um, audience. Mm -hmm. And when we start creating these partnerships kind of around the logarithm, we can start reaching far more people. Um, I think also part of this is realizing that people also get information in the real world and physical communities and where can we meet people in the physical community that can also break those um, social online echo chambers. 
What do you think the, the path forward is for making sure we're combating you know, disinformation and making sure that people are actually getting reliable, accurate information when they turn to an online source? We need to lean in. We need to show up. We need to listen to the questions and concerns and confusion. We need institutional support to mm -hmm. do this as well. We need the training. Um, we need a lot, and we need the funding. I mean, right. we, we need we need it all, and we need it with a lot of urgency right now too. Because, like I said earlier, we are 20 years behind, and really need to catch up and show up. Mm -hmm. um, because if we do not, the systems will um, take the narrative on their own route and leave us experts and public health people completely behind, as well as communities behind. So we need, we need a lot right now. You talk about the systems kind of taking that data and, and repurposing it. How has AI impacted what you're trying to do? Is it helpful or hurtful? You know, I've been playing around with it. Okay. I think the, we'll, we'll see. Okay. You know, I'm not sure. TBD. <laughs> TBD. I mean, it's a tool, right? I've been using it as a tool. It's hard to really rely on AI with the scientific studies because AI doesn't really read them correctly. And so I'm actually incredibly skeptical around AI okay. right now. I think eventually it may help us be faster. It may be able to help us create content easier so we don't put all these you know, hours and sweat and tears into this. Um, but for now, it's more of a curiosity okay. than anything. Okay, and where yeah. can people get reliable, accurate information if they want to follow you? Yeah, so your local epidemiologist. We're on all socials as well as Substack where there's a newsletter. Perfect, thank yeah. you so much for your time today. Thanks Such for an important topic. Me. Yes, thanks for having me.